today's walkthrough, we'll explore the Arm Trawler 1600 AD, meticulously constructed in 2004 at the renowned Jack Balk de Arm shipyard in Werkendam, the Netherlands. With its CE Category A certification, this steel explore yacht is specifically designed and engineered to accommodate prolonged stays on board while maintaining stability and safety across a variety of sea conditions, be it navigating the Mediterranean or crossing expansive open waters. Before I take you around this boat, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to give this video a like. Let's see how quickly we can get to 50,000 subscribers. This Arm Trawler 1650 has a multi-hard chine hull shape constructed of six millimeter thick steel with a tandem keel. The superstructure is also steel and is four millimeters thick and has double glazed aluminum windows. There's also a rubber strake around the hull. She has a length overall of 16.8 meters, a beam of 4.8 meters and a draft of 1.4 meters. Her retractable radar mast means that she has a minimum air draft of 3.5 meters. She was last anti fouled in 2023 and has a displacement of 35 tons. As we access the boat via the starboard gate, you will notice the entrance to the engine room, which we will take a look at later on in the tour. The open cockpit has a non skid paint finish with teak doors, which lead into the saloon. The boat also comes with a cockpit cover. It's nice to see a life ring located here, meaning that should you have a person fall overboard, you can quickly deploy this life-saving device. If you need to update any of the safety equipment on your boat, be sure to check out my nautical stores on Amazon. You'll find the relevant links in the video description. The pilot's house benefits from sliding access doors, which give you quick access to both the port and starboard decks, which of course is incredibly handy when operating this boat single-handedly or as a couple. The boat is fitted with an electric Vetus 1500 windlass and has a pull anchor. The locker was last painted in 2022. As we pan back towards the superstructure, you'll notice there's a skylight that allows lots of natural light and fresh air into the forward cabin. And we'll be checking that cabin out in a minute. I also like the fact you've got some seating up here as well. There are plenty of scuppers dotted along the bulwarks and the stainless steel railing ensures that there is always something to grab onto when you're on the upper deck when the weather turns a bit nautical. There are also in fact a total of four railing side opening gates on this boat. As we emerge back into the cockpit we we'll make a left turn and head into the saloon. What is your favourite feature on board so far during this yacht tour? Let me know in the comments below. On the port side of the saloon, we have a dining area with a freestanding table, so you can configure this area how you like. The galley features a Siemens 4 burner ceramic cooker, Bosch refrigerator, Lieber freezer, and a Siemens dishwasher. And of course, thanks to the large windows, you'll get a fantastic view as you're cooking up your meal. Moving forward, there is a more formal dining area with a large U-shaped seating area. The headroom in the saloon is 205 centimeters and the blinds are only a year old. The area benefits from both heating in the form of a Cobola central heating system and air conditioning, which is a single cycle Vetus 5KW system. As we pan from the starboard side after forage, you get another great view of all the windows. Before we take a look around the pilot's house, I want to take you up onto the large flybridge which we can access via a staircase located on the port side behind the helm position. The lounge set on the flybridge is only a year old and as it is freestanding, you can arrange it however you like. The helm position is located amidships and of course gives you full control of the boat's twin engines as well as the bow thruster. This is also the first boat that I have toured that has Starlink. For me, this would be an absolute must as working on board will be just like working in my studio at home, thanks to the amazing upload and download speeds which you get with Starlink. The boat's tender can be stowed on the aft section of the flybridge and is launched and recovered using the vessel's manual stainless steel deck crane. 
The elevated radar mast features a Raytheon Quantum Solid State radar, along with GPS and AIS antennas. The high mounting of the radar minimises radiation exposure on the flybridge, something not all manufacturers consider, but really should. Now that we've finished having a look around the vast flybridge, let's head back down into the pilot's house so I can show you around the helm position. The throttle levers on the starboard side manage the twin Vetus Duets engines. The helm also boasts a Raymarine ST7001 autopilot, a rudder angle indicator, an Axiom 12 radar GPS. Dual VHFs and hydraulic steering complete the setup on this helm position. Note also the CCTV monitor, another important safety feature. As always, I'm interested to hear what you think of the pilot's house on board this boat, so make sure you share your thoughts in the comments below. But now it's time to head down into the accommodation areas. This boat offers a total of four berths in two double cabins. Let's start by taking a look in the forward cabin. In this cosy cabin, the focus is on comfort and utility. A large French bed ensures optimal sleeping arrangements with a two meter bed length. It accommodates taller occupants with ease. The cabin features ample storage solutions, including hanging spaces, drawers and shelves, making extended voyages more convenient and more organized. Next, we come to the shared bathroom, which is on the starboard side. There is, of course, a spacious vanity area and sink in here, an electric Vetus toilet that was installed in 2022, and a large walk-in shower. The fact that you get two portholes in this area means that you can get lots of fresh air and natural light. Two things which I think are really important when it comes to these types of areas on a boat. Opposite the shared bathroom, we have another space that houses a toilet, another sink, and of course, the washer dryer. I also love the size of the heated towel rail in here. And of course, a tour wouldn't be a tour without the mandatory Royal Navy salute in the mirror. Anyway, enough of that. Let's check out the master full beam cabin before I take you into the engine room. I love the fact there's a grab rail here, a reminder that you are on a boat that is built and designed for serious passage making. Not only does the full beam master cabin come with a French bed, but there's also tons of storage space in here, thanks to the numerous lockers and drawers. There's also a total of eight portholes in this owner's cabin, four of which can be opened up, so you're going to get plenty of fresh air when you're alongside or underway. I also like the fact that the designers of this boat have used the space under the stairs for some additional storage. In my favorite features video, which I'll be uploading to my second channel, Boat Boy, I will show you how I would use this area. If you want to subscribe to that channel, then make sure you check out the link in the video description. Now it's time to head down into the engine room. By the way, if you subscribe to my channel, you probably would have seen the video that I made about the Arm Trawler Delfino 65. I flew to Croatia to film that boat and judging by the nearly 250,000 views which it has had in the last two months, then many of you liked the larger version of this boat. If you have not seen that video yet, then I will of course leave a link in the video description. In the engine room, we find twin Vetus Duets DT64 engines, each delivering 159 horsepower or 117.02 kilowatts. These engines have logged 2,200 hours and feature a fresh water heat exchanger cooling system. They were last serviced in 2022. The propulsion is shaft driven, complete with shaft seals and Bowden cable controls. The hydraulic ZF45 gearbox has a ratio of 1 to 2.5, leading to a four blade fixed propeller crafted from stainless steel. Water lubrication is used for the shafts. The electrical installation includes a 12 volt, 24 volt and 230 volt system, powered by a silent separator Vetus 12 kVA generator. The battery setup consists of two start batteries, 
eight 200 AH service batteries updated in 2022 and individual batteries for the generator, bow thruster and windlass. All of the systems are monitored by a Victron BMV501. Charging is handled by dual Victron Phoenix MultiPlus 24 3070 multi-control inverters and is augmented by two solar panels. Diode battery combiners and shore power connectivity are also in place. So what about her range? Well, she has enough capacity thanks to her three fuel tanks, including a day tank, for just under 3,000 litres of fuel. I've made some very rough calculations based on a burn rate of approximately 10 litres of fuel per engine per hour at around 70% load, motoring at 8 knots, and came up with a figure of around 1,500 nautical miles when motoring in good conditions. However, as I cannot find any official figures, then please do not quote me on that. It's also worth pointing out that her stainless steel freshwater tank can hold 1,410 litres and her black water tank can hold 550 litres. So although you won't be able to cross the Atlantic Ocean on this boat, or at least not without first carrying out some modifications, you could quite easily navigate the Great Loop, motor around the Mediterranean, or thanks to her air conditioning and low draft, cruise around the Caribbean. Talking of passage making, if you are thinking about embarking upon your own voyage of discovery, then I recommend buying Circumnavigation and Ocean Passage Making, written by Ian McNeil, the owner and captain of Astra. I will leave a link with a 40% discount code in the video description. At the time of uploading this video, this arm trawler is listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers for €545,000 which is around US dollars or around £460,000 VAT paid. If you're interested in finding out more about this boat, then I'll leave a link to the broker's website at the bottom of the video description. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and to give this video a like. I'd like to say a massive thank you to Devolk Yacht Brokers for letting me come out and film this boat. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, don't hesitate to get in contact with me. You'll find my contact details in the video description. Don't forget, if you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm doing in between filming and where I'm going next, come and find me on Instagram. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for supporting my channel. Think of channel membership as YouTube's version of Patreon. If you'd like to find out more, click on the link in the video description and I'll be sharing some really exciting updates with my channel members via a live stream over the next couple of days. If you're still watching, if you could give the video a like, that will really help with its reach on YouTube. And don't forget to check out my other videos and playlists.